How's it going guys? Isaac here. Today we're going to be going through doing something nice and fun. We're going to be installing the 1.5 inch leveling kit in the rear of your CRV. Now I got my kit from Aerogenics. The reason we call it the leveling kit is because often the rear of these RD1 CRVs will sag a lot over age. The springs just don't hold up great and even though I've got replaced springs, I wanted to get some more lift out of my car so I threw that 1.5 inch kit in there as well. Um, so today we're just going to be running through all the little steps you need to take to install this. If you're looking for more than just a 1.5 inch leveling kit for the rear, I've also got a guide that you can see here. Uh, I'm going to put a link in the description below. That's for the 1 inch lift kit for the front of your Honda CRV that Aerogenics also sells. There are a few little tricks in there that you're going to want to know if you're going to install those lift spaces up front. So go ahead, click that link if you want to install the front as well. But now we're just going ahead and we're going to install those 1.5 inch ones in the rear. Okay, so first things first, we're going to need a 14 mil. I've just got my electric wrench here. I'll be tightening these down more with my hands after I've finished with this. This is just to speed the process up. Now we're going to need our spring compressors to compress our spring down and rotate that top hat. I stated how important it was to do that in front, but it's even more important to do that with the rear. So please don't skip out on this step. I can show you the gore photos of when I skipped out it. It was a big mistake, so don't repeat that. Now obviously you're going to need something to get your wheel lugs off. Uh, the CRVs have 19 mil, so you can either use a socket kit, a breaker bar, or one of these cross metal ones. Um, you're going to need a jack and jack stands. Now, with your jack stands and your jack, they're going to need to be able to raise up a little bit higher than you're probably used to, just because once you do have your lift on, you're going to be sitting about one and a half inches, two inches higher. Um, so just something to keep in mind that if you if you're close to already maxing out your, your standard jack for your vehicle, you might want to consider picking up a larger one. But with all that said, all you need after that is your lift spaces and then you're ready to go. So let's just jump into it and get this wheel off. First things first, we've got to get a big piece of wood and chock our wheels up front because once we lift this off the ground, we're not going to have any more e-brake or handbrake uh, keeping us from rolling back. So we just want to make sure we've got those points of safety even though we've still got one wheel on the ground, we just want to make sure that car's not going to roll back. Now it's important to remember when we're taking the wheel off, we just want to loosen those lugs before we start raising it up, but not take them off completely. So we're just going to loosen them and start jacking it up. I'm just going to speed things along and get these off. Now that we've got the wheel off, we're just going to place it under the side of the vehicle so that way even if the jack stand fails, we've still got another point of security if that car falls. And now we're just going to lower that jack back down into the jack stand. Okay, so now that we've got the wheel off, we're going to start unbolting things. We need to remove this strut. To do that, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to come in here to the lower control arm and this little thing here, there should be a rod coming off it. Now this is for your sway bar. Mine has unfortunately snapped. But basically, all you need to do is this little nut here needs to come off. You may need an Allen key to stop that stud from threading. Potentially, a rattle gun would do it quite effectively too. But you just need to disconnect that sway bar end link so that this lower control arm can articulate a little better. Now, once we've got that sway bar out, we're going to come into the boot of the vehicle and we're going to undo the two studs on the top of the top hat here. Now obviously you can see I've already got my 1.5 inch aerogenics lift spacer in the top here. The process for doing this is exactly the same. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead into the boot of the vehicle now and unbolt those two studs and then we can come to this bottom bolt down here and undo that. These two plastic covers here. Now they give us access to that shock tower. You can just, you just need to get under it. There we go. So we've got that out. This little boot can come off. Okay, so we only want to touch these two studs right now. We're only getting these two nuts off. So we're just going to... One. Two. We don't need to bring them off all the way yet. You can see that's still being held under tension. So now what we want to come and do... Alright, so now that we've loosened those two studs up top, we can try and loosen this one. I currently have a 1.5 inch lift spring and a 1.5 inch lift spacer. So this bolt down here is under tension, as is the one for my camber on. Now, yours should just come right out if you were to try and loosen it. You'll see that mine just won't budge. It's just got too much strain on it. Now, the good thing is that every time you need to unbolt your suspension, you'll need to go ahead and unbolt it from the camber arm first anyway. 
flowing forward uh, once you're lifted. So you're just gonna wanna find a nice safe point to jack up from under the hub. Get that, all that tension out of that bolt there. We just wanna get it up nicely to where it should be for factory suspension. And then that should just come nicely out. You may still have to put a little bit of grunt into loosening it, but once you loosen it, there we go. Now that's come out nice and easily. Now we can lower this jack back down so that this whole hub assembly can come down nice and easy. So we just want to do this nice and gentle. Now that shock is going to have quite a lot of tension under it. You can see that the camber arm there just popped nicely back out. We also want to make sure our jack stand is still in the right place because that might have lifted it off it, but we're all in the clear here. Now we can pull that jack stand out and we should no longer be under any tension at this. It may need, again, a little bit of loosening because it's tightened under load, but All right, now we've got these two grade 10 bolts. They look kind of similar, but there's a little bit of difference. So the camera on bolt is this flat one. You just wanna make sure that you remember which bolt is for which. So this flat one is for the camera arm up here, whereas this pinhead style one is for the bottom of your shock here. Um, so just keep those in a safe place and don't get them mixed up because you wanna make sure you have the right bolt going to the right part of your suspension. Now that we've got our sway bar, our camber arm, and the bottom of our strut, all disconnected, we can go back into the boot of the vehicle and we can remove those two nuts holding those studs in place and remove the entire shock assembly. So we're just coming right back here. Those will just come right off. Now, your shock might fall, it might not, um, depending on how much the bushing is being held in by the bottom of the lower control arm. As you can see, mine's still sitting there nicely so it didn't fall. We just want to get those studs. Again, put them nice, safe. I keep all of my stuff with my socket kit. Okay, so now that we've got those nuts off the studs, you can see that whole strut has just pulled right out. It's kind of sitting in the middle of the lower control arm. So you just want to wiggle it back up and give it a good old. Okay, so now that we've got that shock out of the rear of your vehicle, we can finally get that spacer on top. Now today, we're just going through and doing the one and a half inch lift space from Aerogenics. However, I'm actually gonna be removing my one and a half inch lift spacer. The reason for this is I have a two inch lift spacer over there. I'm gonna be going ahead and installing that in exactly the same way you will install your 1.5 inch lift spacer. So don't fret, there is nothing different about how the rest of this install will be, aside from the fact that mine is gonna be slightly chunkier and that's totally fine. Now, one thing I would like to note while I'm down here talking about the differences in lift height is that when you go past a certain height, I'm saying around the two inch mark, one and a half inch, you should be fine. But past that two inch mark, you're gonna wanna pick up a set of trailing arm spaces. Now, Aerogenic sells them, and if you send them a message, they'll be able to give you a better idea of what size you wanna go with. I personally have a one and a half inch lift spring and a one and a half inch lift spacer, so I went with a two inch trailing arm spacer. Now what that trailing arm spacer does is this hub assembly here with your wheel, when you lift it with a strut spacer, you're actually you're messing with the geometry of your trailing arm. Now what that trailing arm spacer does is it just puts it back to factory or as close to as you can, depending on the lift spacer that you went with. But if you are concerned about whether you need a trailing arm spacer, I'm sure Aerogenics will be more than happy to answer your questions and help you get the right parts for your vehicle. Anyway, we can just hop to and get that 1.5 inch spacer on the strut and then we can start compressing the spring and rotating that top hat. Now, because I've already rotated the top hat, uh, I'm not gonna be doing this right now. However, last time I did do it, I filmed it. So you'll see exactly the process this time. So that's gonna play now and I'm gonna go ahead and swap this spacer over. Now, once you've got that spacer bolted on top, you'll notice that your factory studs are actually offset by about an inch from your new studs on top of the spacer. So what we've now got to do, this is where we're going to break out our spring compressors. I recommend if you are planning on replacing your springs that you do it now because this is the perfect opportunity as you will already be removing your springs from your strut assembly. If you're not, that's okay. Uh, just follow this guide and we'll go ahead and rotate that top hat. So first things first, we just want to get that first spring compressor on and just sort of get it tightened down. Now I'm going to be using my electric wrench where I can, but I know at a certain point 
it's not going to have any power and I'm going to have to wrench away, so. Let's see if that's enough. So what we're going to need is we're going to need our 14 once more. There's this little nut and washer on top. Now, it's also worth noting that I am running lift springs already, which means that mine are quite harder to compress. So it's important to note there's actually an Allen key fitting around this, uh, this nut and stud. Uh, if you can't get this stud off, you're gonna wanna put an Allen key in there and just have to use a, an actual wrench to remove that. Uh, I haven't run into this issue before, but I am right now, so I'm just gonna use my rattle gun and hope that does the trick because I don't have any Allen keys on me. And that made very short work of it. Now, as you can see, that just popped right on off. Uh, we don't wanna lose any parts, so let's just make sure when we remove this, we're paying close attention. Now, my spring is clearly very well seated in this top hat here, so we're just gonna pry that off. And as you can see, we've now got our shock disassembled. First things first, we just wanna make sure that that uh, spring is just sitting where it was. Uh, there's a little notch here that the bottom of the spring sits in. Now, this is the part where a lot of people might run into some issues. Um, so I'm gonna go through everything nice and clearly. Okay, so now you can see inside the top hat here, there's this little notch here. Now that is where the flat part of the top of your spring has been sitting. What we need to do is we need to look at where that was sitting. So that's just in line with the edge of that there, pretty much. Um, so what we need to do is we need to rotate the spring along the top hat so that it's sitting here instead of here. So that just means that that'll be sitting flush with that stud there um, and our top hat is gonna line up properly when we go to bolt it back up. So now we've got that in place, we're just gonna put that on, tighten that back down. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get our little washer that was on there, we're gonna pop that on. You might need to compress your springs further to actually get to this point. Um, I think I might actually need to because I can't quite get at that stud there and these springs are quite uh, strong. I went ahead and uh, tightened those down off camera. So now I'm just tightening the nut on top back down um, and then we can remove the spring compressors and go through the process of bolting it back up. Get that torque down. Now we can go through and remove these spring compressors and then all we have to do is bolt everything back up. Okay, we've gone ahead, we've bolted that spacer on top, we've rotated that top hat, and we're finally ready to start bolting things back up to the vehicle. We're gonna make sure that those studs line up with that marker down there on that bottom of the bushing. If they do, we can go ahead. First, we wanna slide the bottom of that shock into the lower control arm, and then we wanna try and slide these studs into their holes so we can start bolting everything back together. So we're just gonna try and wiggle that up, line them up, and Lift it in if we can. Now, there's a good chance it will just fall back down without that camber arm bolted up. So let's just put something underneath to hold it there just while we get the top of those studs uh, secure with a nut on top. So we're just gonna get that nice and finger tight. We can leave a little bit of wiggle room so it can move around a bit. We don't need to tighten it down just yet. All right, now that we've got those tightened down just by finger, we can remove the, anything holding the bottom of this. Try and force the hub down just so we can get that bushing sleeve to line up with the lower control arm. It might take a little bit of uh, playing around because that bushing sleeve can just be a little tight, but once you wiggle it into place, just about there, there we go. You can see that wasn't too much effort. And now we just want to get this in just enough again to make sure that that's not going anywhere. And then we can just lightly, lightly tighten that down. So we just want to make sure it's going in. As, as you can see, that's not actually quite going through. So that means it's not quite lining up. Um, and we just want to have a little bit of a play around, a little bit of a wiggle, try and just get that to line up with the bushing a little bit better. And now it's going in nicely. Now, just making sure none of that bolt is stripped. 
Okay, so now that we've got our strut tail bolted back up in the boot and at the bottom of the lower control arm, we need to address the camber arm. So that's the next thing to get bolted up. Now, I just want to quickly note that because I am lifted so high, my camber arm is never going to remain in its factory geometry. It's not going to be performing right. Now, there are two things once you go past the three inch mark that you're going to want to do. I'm not going to go too into detail because this is only a guide for the one and a half inch kit, but I figured I'd put the information out there just in case anyone thinks that they can just go ahead and put a three inch spacer in and call it a day. You can't. The reason for that is this camber arm here. It's non adjustable and the higher you lift the vehicle with a strut spacer, the lower this will have to be to attach until eventually it hits this little bit of metal here against the chassis and it can't move anymore. Now the other issue there is when this is all bolted together, when that moves down further to that low, low, low point of travel, this is moving in and your camera is just going wild. So if you're swaying around on the highway at 100 kilometers an hour because you hit a little dip and you're over three inches, this is probably why. So the first thing you're gonna want is an adjustable camera arm. You can get that from Hard Race or True Heart. They make great products, either will do. And the second thing you're gonna need is the HRG camber arm drop bracket. Now essentially what that does is it's a bracket that moves your mounting point from here to about here. So this will remain back at its factory geometry, meaning that you're not gonna be having any crazy swaying issues on the highway. You're not gonna be maxing out at your camber arm. You're not gonna run into any issues. Now, that's only an issue if you're going three inches or higher. We're only going one and a half inches today. So you won't need to worry about that, but naturally, because I'm over that three and a half inch mark, this is not gonna bolt back up right. Um, so I will need to add those. I'm just waiting for mine to come back from powder coating. However, what you will now need to do to attach this camber arm to this without too much trouble is we're just gonna jack it up from the hub just to make it a little bit easier so you're not straining your body against it, trying to get it to line up right, because you are one and a half inches higher and it will not bolt up perfect. So I've got a lower profile jack this time. I'm just gonna put it right on the hub and I'm just gonna start tightening it down. Okay, so now that we've got the trailing arm jacked up, we can try and line the camber arm up with the trailing arm bolt holes for it. You might have a little bit of trouble. So if you have a Phillips or a flat head to try and wiggle the bushing into the right spot. If you can get it through both sides, you know it's in the right spot. Okay, so now that I've fought with the trailing arm to get that camber arm to line up, we've got that bolt in, we can start to tighten that down. That's actually on loosen. And now would actually be a good time to actually tension it since it's all under load. So we can tighten that last bolt at the strut and we can tighten this camber arm bolt. After that, we can just reattach the sway bar, put the wheel back on and we're completely done. Now that's tightened on the load. We can come down and tighten this one at the bottom of the strut. Tighten that down nicely. I'm happy with that. We can now tighten down the ones at the top of the strut. I'm just gonna tighten these studs down. Now, all that's left to do is bolt that sway bar back up, remove this jack and put the wheel on. While we're doing this, I'm just gonna show you what I meant by the camber arm being limited in travel as it goes down before. If I just record this and lower that jack back down. You can see by factory, just look how close that camber arm is to touching the uh, chassis there. It just has no movement left. That's why we've got to get our hard race camber arms to have adjustable camera and the HRG camber arm drop bracket just to bring that alignment back up so we don't have that issue. Okay, so we just want to safely lift the vehicle up off that jack stand now. We've got it raised enough to get this wheel back on. And there you have it. That's everything you need to know to install the 1.5 inch leveling kit from Aerogenics in the rear of your CRV. I hope you liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you did. Give it a thumbs up if you didn't. Tell me why. Ignore my barking dog. Hope this video helped and I'll see you next time. Peace. Nailed it. Woo!